Have you played D and D, Dungeons and Dragons before, like tabletop or like video no, game? No. Or... Well, video game is like I I haven't finished it yet, like Baldur's Gate three. And uh, okay, yeah. I would say that's the closest. That's the probably the closest you you'll get to um yeah. to Dungeons and Dragons, right? Yeah. All right. So the reason why I want to bring it up, so I guess uh, Wizards of the Coast has made uh catch came out with new art for um dungeons and dragons and if it can't be any more woke it is 100 woke now so right over here it's from mr triceratops on twitter it says the disney vibe that wizard of the coast has been going for is the number one turn off for official D D products for me me ditching five e years ago for smaller company products, it was the best decision I've ever made as a game master. So, Gray, Dungeons and Dragons. Did you know that Dungeons and Dragons back in the day were for like nerds and geeks and stuff like that? They were into like dragons and it was like back in the, the 80s and stuff like that. But now you get hipsters. So these guys, you know, this guy's baking. He has a cat next to him and like he has a weird beard yeah, tattoo over here. And this one has a weird beard tattoo. And okay, this is not that bad. But it gets worse. It gets worse. Orcs are now Mexicans. I I don't know, man. These are orcs. Let me pull up the actual image on the side so we can see these in odds glory. So yeah. What Gray, what are your thoughts on these uh, orcs? Oh, the fat one is hilarious. That's Lizzo. <laughs> yeah. Uh I don't know. The end like the end of D D or Wizards of the Coast. Maybe someone will step up and make their own kind of tabletop that hopefully goes viral. But yeah, it's like it's the Wokies have taken over Wizards of the Coast Games Workshop. And yeah, it's like now, for those who are looking to create their own, that goes in line with these uh, universes, these mechanics, these tabletop games. I mm -hmm. think now is a good time. Now is a good time to step up and actually make your own, where it can't yep. be van vandalized or destroyed by these crazies inside these companies right now that are funded by BlackRock. Yeah, it's only gonna get worse. It's only gonna it's like, because like it's funded by you know those conglomerates, those financial institutions. So they have the money to burn. They they don't care if they incur losses for the next twenty years. So mm -hmm. now's the time to step up the plate. Now to take to step step up and uh make your mark for the smaller teams. Like kind of like uh Eric July and the Ripperverse. It's yeah, just another version of that. Yeah. Yeah, man, and, and, and I I don't play D and D. I originally wanted to actually try like a like an actual tabletop style D and D with my friend, uh, but the thing is that this is not even the worst one. This is the worst one. All right, avert your eyes, chat. You might you might actually get a stroke. Man, if D and D is not gay enough. It's gay now. Two old ladies, two guys, two ladies looking at one another. A, 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 oh my god, dude! Oh my god! Of course, they're gonna say D and D is for everyone, though. D and D is for everyone. Like, do you actually have like? I'm pretty sure there are gay and lesbian people who play D and D. Don't get me wrong, but how? What's the percent? What what is the actual percentage of D and D players that are that are part of the LGBTQ community? Less than five, probably. Like, why why are you catering to people that will never buy your game, that will never buy your tabletop, that will never buy any of this? So why are you catering to them? Yeah, it's a good way to lose money. Yeah, that that's the thing with what these DEI funds have set like. These people feel like it's okay. It doesn't matter if you're losing money because oh, we, we have BlackRock and Vanguard anyway to keep paying our bills. Th that's how they say it. Yeah. it doesn't matter if it makes money or not, because again, it's like it's like they keep getting the money from 
companies or conglomerates. Yeah, it's kind of like a yeah. Warner Brothers thing. So they have six. Apparently, it's sixty billion dollars now in debt. So it's <laughs> it, 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 so it's like man, it must be super fun to be an executive at Warner Brothers because even if you lose the money, you can just <laughs> keep borrowing, <laughs> just keep borrowing and. Yeah, like if, if ever they want they want their money back, it's the company's liability, not the personal, not people inside it, not the employees. Yeah. Uh, the thing is that, like, when I think of orcs, I think of like, like Warcraft, like World of yeah. Warcraft orcs. Yes, exactly. Right. I think of uh, I think of Thrall. Right. I think of uh fucking uh like like a bunch of these like awesome like you know gore how like imagine like like the like freaking. Oh man, it's just it, it it sucks. And then see, this is this is what this is what we're getting, right? They're trying to sexualize orcs. Uh, look, I'm not saying orcs aren't hot and stuff like that. Like there, what, there's a female orc that was in the wow, uh, the world, the Warcraft movie, I guess that was sort of hot. But the thing is that when I see orcs in D and D, this is what I see. I see these, these like look, damn, this drawing is sick, man. This is probably done like a long time ago too. Like this, I, I see this, I see this. Right, and I see like these, like the sketches. Right, this is like your D and D people storming in, and they're fighting against orcs. Right, that's what I see. I, not, not this man. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.